Well, it's very nice to drive. Cool. It handles yeah. well. Again, it's less effort to drive than a gas car. I mean, I'm not shifting gears. Yeah. I'm not, you know. Uh -huh. It's quiet. I mean, I'm talking to you. I'm, quiet. I'm not raising my voice. People think because you like old cars, that, oh, you must hate new technology. I don't. I find it fascinating. Yeah, I think uh, both can live together. Um, oh, exactly, exactly. I'm here in Torrance, California, a company called Canoe. One of the founders is a man named Phil Weicker. He's full of ideas. We'll find out. Phil, how are you, my friend? Great, Jay. Good to see you so again. So what are we going to do here today? Uh, we've been working on something really exciting for the last couple of years. Why don't you come in and meet some people and see what we've been up to? Let's check it out. Okay, so you're a car company. You're building cars. But they're not cars people actually buy, is that correct? That's right, they're by subscription only. So that means I would have the car for a certain amount of time, like it's subscribing to a magazine or something, I would get it from X to Y, to a certain period. Yeah, we'll deliver it when you need it, we'll pick it up when you don't, and we'll take care of anything that comes up along the way. Okay, so any maintenance involving the car, any trouble with the car, it just disappears, you bring me another one, is that how? That's, that's right. So the car is not a personal item. I could not personalize this car in any way, right? It's just the way I would use a refrigerator or a wash, it's, it becomes like an appliance sort of thing? I think that's a good way of looking at yeah. it. Okay, okay. And this is the car right here? This is it. Okay. I'd like to introduce you to one of my colleagues and co-founders, Richard Kim. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Well, it's fascinating. It certainly looks like the future. It almost looks like, you know, back in the 30s, they did a lot of the Stout Scarab and a mm -hmm. few other mm -hmm. vehicles like this, which were, well, their version of people movers, they used to call them back in the day. And you, you, you could take, like, how many is this seat? It actually seats seven. Okay. So this car is, uh, we think, perfect for city use, so it's a very small footprint, but huge on the inside. So it's electric? Full electric. Okay, all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive? Rear-wheel drive. Rear-wheel Rear drive, wheel yeah. drive, okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously you can go highway speeds as well if needed. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. Now, as a subscriber, do I drive the car myself or is there a driver included with the car? <laughs> well, well, you'll have to supply your own driver. Oh, okay, yeah. I see, okay. Now, is this aerodynamically efficient or? For, for the shape, it's actually, the yeah. aerodynamics uh, performs quite well, uh, mostly for a city and lower speed, so. Yeah, it so works aerodynamics perfectly. don't really. Well, it doesn't apply right, as much. Right, right, so yeah. you know, okay, okay. Now the subscription part I find fascinating, because I'm a guy, I like to own things, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but I'm the older generation. I, I think younger people look at vehicles not so much as a personal item they're attached to, as just something to get around. Is yeah. it fair to say? Yeah, I mean, um, we still see that uh, owning cars and enjoying cars, is there's still a, obviously a market for that, but there's actually a big piece of the market that wants just a really nice way to get from point A to point B. Plus, I've always felt that in the future, your Ferrari, your Lamborghini, your MG, that'll be like a snowmobile. You, you use it on weekends, maybe you go up to the hills, yeah. But during the week with congestion and whatnot, you don't want to sit in traffic in a car like this. So this would be your weekly transportation pod, so to speak, just to get you to work, get you to the store, yeah. that type of thing? That's a good way to put it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, is it autonomous as well? It does have uh, autonomous features, that's for sure. Uh, we call it something like a level 2.5 uh, right. out of uh, the five uh, number ranking system. But I see that you have a steering wheel and controls for a driver because mm -hmm. I think for the foreseeable future, autonomous vehicles will have to have some sort of human driver behind the wheel, right? Even if it is autonomous. Because, uh, you know, over the years I've seen people come in with thinking there's no controls of any kind. Yeah. Oh, you're just going to get, well, uh -huh. same reason I don't get on a plane that has no pilot. Hey, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. You know, so I, I think that's very clever that you've sort of incorporated the realistic fact of yeah. laws are laws. You yeah. Know? What is your range, do you know? 250 miles is okay. what we're targeting. Okay. So it's standard electric technology in terms of lithium-ion, water-cooled uh -huh. battery, yep. standard motor, okay, mm -hmm. that type of thing. I guess the whole uniqueness is in the subscription part mm -hmm. and then the seating arrangement. Mm -hmm. Would it be fair to say? Yeah, we did two bold things. One is it's a very unique design. It's radical, uh, but very uh, rational at the same time. And then the subscription model. So those are two things we took a a bold step. Can we take a look at the yeah, interior? Yeah, let's take a look at the inside. So what you see here is really a different experience than any other car on the road. Okay. Uh, we consider this more like a, a little loft on wheels. Right. Now, I assume this here 
is mm -hmm. for safety reasons. Yeah, there, there are things that, yeah. Whenever I see people build cars in the future, uh -huh. this is missing, the doors open this yeah, way for all right. this space, yeah. uh -huh. but they haven't thought about crash protection and roll over and all right, the other things, right. which yeah. you obviously have That's done. Right, yeah. So what you have here. This is like a prototype, what we call right. it. It's not a show car. It's a practical uh, vehicle. Mm -hmm incorporating yeah. all the standard yeah, features that you exactly need. okay mm -hmm. we designed the car here um, even though it's in prototype phase it has all of the the requirements for industrialization what you have here is like a U you can get yeah. a home you can put uh -huh. someone here as well yeah yeah uh, so uh, those um, those two extra seats are for maybe you would say occasional use uh, but we designed these seats to behave and feel more like furniture furniture in your own home Right, like uh, when you used to get an old style Cadillac limo, mm -hmm. there would be like a jump seat that could yeah, flip yeah, up, yeah. that kind uh -huh. of thing. Now, does the government demand that airbags and everything be necessary in those situations? Yeah, as well? we, we, we uh, fulfill all those requirements. Okay. Uh, we, we plan to have five star safety standards. Right, so. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, it's very nice here. And you can grow your own marijuana, I see right yeah. here in the doors. So that's it's California. Nice. Yeah, so, California. Yeah. You've got to have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, instead of offering features that the customer may or may not want. We set up this uh, concept that's more like a pegboard, mm -hmm. where you bring your own stuff, uh, depending on what you, wanna, what you wanna use. So when someone subscribes to a car, I, I find Americans like to individualize things, mm -hmm. whether it's your iPhone with a bedazzler, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and the same thing, and is that the feeling here? You subscribe yeah. to it, but you can personalize it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. So okay. the pegboard uh, offers interior personalization the car comes in any color you want, as long as it's black. Mm -hmm. uh, and then because of the simple shape, you can apply wrapping and personalize the outside however you want. Now, are there any sort of solar panels or any of that type of thing? Uh, no, we have an all glass roof. We, we okay. want to have the sensation of space. Right. Uh, we do offer this feature here. These are what we call safari style Okay, windows. like the old uh, Volkswagen 23 yeah, There's a there. retro touch uh, to okay. this uh, feature, but we think it's really cool especially as a space uh, where you may hang out. Well, this is the most impressive part to me because it shows you've engineered yeah. the safety factor mm -hmm. involved as well. Uh, okay, low to the ground, easy to step in. I assume the floor platform is your battery tray. Yeah, everything is housed in uh, what we call a skateboard. So you just put the body on the skateboard mm -hmm. type of thing, okay. And you've got an awful lot of room up front there. Why is that? Yeah. Why? What is it? What is it? the reason for this area here well so you can see through the car okay. uh in, in the past this was what used to be an engine compartment but now that we can open this up because everything's in the skateboard you can now see through so you can imagine in like a city or a driving environment how how cool and how oh a small how, child yeah. or something on a tricycle you would see them. yeah exactly how, how about luggage capacitor where yeah. would you where would you go there we do have a, a trunk it's actually pretty decent in size but okay. we see a world especially in the city where you want to grab your stuff and go right you know okay. just in and out and that's why people love these rideshare platforms because okay. you just get in and out so size wise this is about as big as what I mean yeah, it's a it's it's a small car it right? is small so but it, you know it's standing mm -hmm. here it looks big uh -huh. because of the shape yeah. but it is quite small yeah. I mean I don't imagine this wheelbase is any longer than a 911 Porsche it's a t uh, 2850 in wheelbase okay. the overall length is 4400 okay. uh, so that's a very compact footprint very cool obviously you put your phone yeah no your, your exactly. entertainment yeah system. so no okay. screens um, we fi find that uh, uh, cars offer sometimes the oldest technology when it comes to infotainment and what better screen than the one in your own pocket. All right, because I'm trying to figure out how subscription is different from leasing. Is well, we, we, we see a lease as something that you're still tied to for, for several months, I several see. years. Yeah, and you're, the, and it, you're limited yeah. to 12,000 miles a year and anything over that. It's so this you could drive the heck out of if you uh -huh. wanted to. Mm -hmm. And, and subscription month doesn't at a time. go up. That's okay. right, a month yeah. at a time. And of course, being electric, mileage is not really an issue because electric doesn't wear yeah, out. We've done a really good job with range. We have 250, yeah. 250 miles. So uh, we think, especially for the city, that's more than enough. Yeah, I think that's more than enough. Yeah. Uh, most people don't go, yeah. And, it, you know, I looked, it looked to me as if, I thought at first those were induction systems to charge you from underneath, as opposed to, but this would be a standard plug-in. Yeah, okay. that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, it sounds like you made a practical realization of what the future is. Yeah as opposed to, yeah. you know, like the steering wheel, like the yeah. infrastructure we already have. It's okay.
Very good. So what is the next step for you guys? Is the, uh, do you want to sell this to a major manufacturer? Do you want to mm -hmm. produce them mm -hmm. all yourselves, run mm -hmm. the whole company here, mm -hmm. or be part of something else? How does that work? Mm. So we, we're doing contract manufacturing. Um, we're going to be in the next phase of our, our, our company in testing. Uh, so we're going to produce these uh, vehicles we call beta vehicles, and they do go through the safety requirements and the validation. Right, so that's right. the next phase. Now, do you yeah. start in a city like Los Angeles and you mm -hmm. just keep it here? Yeah. And then when you go to the next city, do you build a manufacturing facility in that city as well, or is it all? No, we'll, we'll manufacture in one place, right. uh, but that is a good question. Um, we are going to go city by city. Uh, most of electrification is centered around specific cities around the U.S., and so we're going to target one city at a time. You know, that's what they used to do in the early days. Uh, when they built cars, there was a company that built cars in San Francisco, and their selling point was they had massive brakes. I mean, like, uh -huh. this, literally the size of the wheel. So they sold it on the basis, this is the only car that can stop on a hill in San Francisco uh -huh. in less than how many feet. And so each town had different requirements, mm. you know. So how far away do you think you are? We're going to launch in the end of 2021. That's the plan. Uh, so far, we've hit every milestone, so things are looking good. Oh, cool. Yeah. Now, uh, selling people on the idea of a subscription, how does that work? What is, mm -hmm. what is, what, what is the selling point there as opposed mm. to leasing from, like, the Chevy dealer across the street? How do, you, yeah. how do you beat that guy with subscription? Yeah, well, everything in life now is subscription. This is just sort of the modern way, uh, the next generation, and maybe it's a younger audience. They really believe in subscription. Right. Uh, so we follow that same model. Can we take this one for a ride? Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. give it a yeah. shot. Well, I got to admit, it's very comfortable back here. You got all kinds of leg room. I'm trying to get this subscription thing. When you, obviously, when you buy a car, maybe you drive it off a lot, depreciates what? At least a third. Right in away. Most cases. Yeah. yeah. The true cost of ownership of a vehicle. Right. right. It's not. It's not really. You know, communicated well. Right. You have down payments and registration sure. and stuff like that. So. So the idea here, you as a subscription, I just sign up. I pay, three, four, five hundred a month. But that's insurance. That's everything. Everything. There's yeah. no down payment. I don't own a. I don't owe a big chunk of money at the end of the the subscription period. Mm -hmm. You just, whatever you subscribed it for, that's it. Is that right? Have I yeah, got that right? It, it's just like you described it. It's, uh, it's all inclusive, uh, no down payment, um, no commitment, right? right? M many of these programs, even a lease, they, you're stuck with them for a long time. Or if you buy a car, you know, right as you drive off the lot, it tanks in value. Yeah. So uh, we see this as, um, uh, so, uh, makes so sense. Let's say I come to LA to do a movie for four months. I could sign up, get a four-month subscription, mm -hmm. have the car for four months. The day I go back to New England or wherever I'm from, mm -hmm. I just give the car back That's and right. you walk away. That's right, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So simple, so easy. So um, And yeah. no, no wear and tear, no mileage no. charge, no nothing. Okay, okay. That's, yeah. that's pretty yeah. cool. I mean, I'm on the freeway every day, and I really see two people mm. in the car most of the time. Why do you feel the need to make it a seven-seater? Well, um, most people, they, they select a car for every possible use case. Right. right. So the beauty of our car is it's a really small footprint. So it's the size of what mostly two seaters would be. But you do have when you want the benefit of up to seven seats. Yeah. So. OK, very cool. Very cool. And a good greenhouse. It's nice and open in here. Yeah. So it's a lot of glass. Uh, we see this as uh, like the third space. It's not an office. It's not home. It's somewhere right. in between. Uh, so we wanted to give that, that feeling of lightness and the feeling of more like a little room on wheels. Well, it is sort of reminiscent of the VW bus, the 23 window. It's uh -huh. that same kind of feel instead of the engine being, well, the engine's still back here where it'd be in the Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah, we know that car. It's, a, it's yeah. quite the icon. I, um, I'm pretty sure that car is a lot bigger than this one. Yeah. Um, so we've really maximized space compared to yeah. a lot of the offerings. So, you know, you're talking about if you were to go to a car rental and say I'd like a compact vehicle, you know, this fits in that category. Right, right. But That's, at the same time, yeah. you have XXL SUV space. And with a 250 mile range, you just plug it in when you get home and the next morning you got a full tank again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so part of the, the membership would include charging credits and really we want it to be one stop shop. Oh, OK. All right. And how many dads would be thrilled to have their daughters get in this? Look, you can lie down on the floor here. It's fabulous, yeah. You, you go take a woman out there. Guy goes, all right, 
Hit the road, Park. I'm not taking my daughter out in that thing. I'd be curious to see more of the technical side. Mm -hmm. uh, can we, is there a place where we can see it without the body on the chassis yeah. and, and the, the motors? Sure. I'm saying, oh, cool. Yeah, sure. Right after this uh, test drive, we'll, we'll, we'll go break take a down look. all the components of the car. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is, I don't have to chip in for gas, so let's just drive around. Well, that was fun. So I want to show you a really cool feature, very exciting. This is the first uh, true steer-by-wire on the market. Okay. Uh, and, and there's absolutely no mechanical linkage. So, so there's no mechanical backup. It's that's all right, yeah. Electric. There's, there's safety systems that are redundant, of course. But you can see if you look at the, the right, skateboard, I see you're turning the, okay. the wheels turn on their own. So all right. oh, that's so really this, cool. I see. This body goes on top of that. That's right. All right. Yeah. And is this, this is steel, huh? Yeah, this is all steel. Okay. Uh, we find this is the most efficient uh, material for our use case. Yeah, the, the steer by wire is really cool because you can put this, basically this module anywhere in the vehicle. Right. So depending on what kind of vehicle you want to do, you can move this all the way forward like we've done. You can push it back. This really can go anywhere in the vehicle. Now, just to be devil's advocate, if your power should suddenly be cut, mm -hmm. Would you lose your drive by wire? Would you lose your ability uh, to steer? So safety is really important for us. Every single component has a redundant backup system. Okay, so you have a power supply separate that will yeah. kick in. Okay. That's right. All right. Very uh -huh. nice. Very nice. Well, let's take a look at the chassis. Do you still call it a chassis? I don't even know. Uh, we're calling it a skateboard. A skateboard. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. And so this is really great for design. It's very slim. Uh, it's very low profile. Uh, you typically have struts that are intruding into the space. Mm -hmm. We got everything very, very flat. So this is basically modular. You can put anybody you want on yeah, this. You can put idea. a truck on it. You can put it a seven passenger. Okay. Anything goes, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Now this one's dual engine, but the one we drove in just now, that was a single engine. Yeah, we correct? can offer in, in either configuration. Okay. Yeah. So what is the standard? It's rear wheel drive. Rear wheel drive, say. okay. Yeah. So what's that, about 300 horsepower? That's right, 300 horsepower. And up here, it's a different engine, though, a little different, isn't it? Yeah, so you can you would start with uh, rear-wheel drive as uh, the base option, mm. or you can have dual motor. Okay. So I assume this is modular. If one mm. section goes bad, you have a dead cell, you can replace just that cell, That's basically? right, yeah. So it's just one okay. module that would need to be replaced. And how many volts am I looking at? This is 400 volts. Okay. Wow, okay. Well, I'll get the word. I have a 1909 Baker Electric, and that's 78 volts. Uh -huh. okay. But it moves pretty good. Yeah. I mean, 1909, lead-acid batteries, it goes 80 miles on yeah. a charge, you know. Electric cars are zippy. They're fun to drive. They are. I mean, the, the, the biggest sort of uh, bugaboo, or whatever you want to call it, is battery technology. You know, Edison came out with an alkaline battery, and he sent Henry Ford a letter saying, it's going to put your Model T out of business, it's going to change electric cars. But the alkaline battery never really came to fruition. It really was not the savior he thought it would be. But the only thing that's kept electric cars down has been the battery technology. Now it's moving yeah. leaps and bounds. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's getting better all the time. How quickly. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. All right, very nice. Obviously, it has regen, so mm -hmm. every time you get off the throttle, you're putting more. That's right, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done. Yeah, what's really great about the, the skateboard here is it's totally independent right. from the top hats. Yeah. And that for us is, um, that was quite hard to achieve, but we've done a good job here. Even though this is, I don't want to say it's standard electric uh, car technology, but you, you, do, you design your own motors, you design your own, you know, to me, any, with an internal combustion company, to me, the companies I really admire are the ones that build their own engines. Mm -hmm. and, and you build your own motors for these, correct? Yeah, same, yeah. same story here. We do everything right. from scratch. We okay. do whatever is the most optimal for our use case. So everything has to be done from, from ground zero. And I imagine also the less outside suppliers you have, the less problems yeah. you have. You know, if they have a problem, mm -hmm. you have a problem. Mm -hmm. and we, we, yeah. you know, when you design your own electric yeah. motor, if you have a problem, it's just your problem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And, and we do work with suppliers here. They're nope. good partners for us, but uh, there's a lot of ownership that we have to take. That's right. That's uh -huh. right. So if something goes wrong with them, you, they don't. Nobody yeah. blames uh -huh. them. They blame you. So I think it's very clever that you've done your own, uh, your own motor. And this is a lot of work designing, mm. and, and manufacturing your own motor. It's pretty amazing. 
All right, Jay, I want to show you something really interesting over here. You know, that was really interesting. Yeah, this yeah. one's also <laughs> just as interesting. All right. Yeah. So if you stand there, right. you okay. notice that... Uh, oh, you have a gang problem with graffiti, <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. Exactly. Yeah. So we use uh, deep learning technology to recognize your face. And uh, the reason we do this is uh, it's super annoying when you have all these sensors around the car mm -hmm. and they're like beeping at you as like, you know, uh, cars are driving past you. Right, right. And what happens is you just turn it off. Yeah, so what's happening here is it's recognizing if you are paying attention, then it leaves you alone. If you're oh, fumbling so, around with something so, else. Oh, so if I'm driving and my eyes start to close. Then it'll beep. Then it'll, it'll, it'll you. beep. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or if I look out the window, okay, so. Yeah. It's like having your mom. Hey, smart enough. Hey, <laughs> smart enough. Hey, pay attention. Hey, out. Yeah. And the hand will actually that's turn right. out and do that to you. Yeah, that's cool. But if you are paying attention, then no one will slap you. Okay, yeah, so well, that's perfect. all right. That's yeah. good. Now, does it stay on my face like that forever? That would be, uh, if I have a two-year <laughs> subscription, that would get real annoying after about the first half hour. So there isn't a screen that actually shows no, you like no, this. but I uh, see. Yeah, I see. All right, cool. <laughs> so it recognized me also when you get in the car. So, I, so does this also work, for example, do I get in the car and I sit here for a minute, it recognizes me, and I go? Or yeah. do I still need a fob or something? This is more of like for driver assistance, oh, but okay. you still have your, your app, your right. canoe app, and that's how you, you enter and exit the vehicle. So it's basically a safety feature to make it's sure a, exactly. your eyes are focused uh -huh. on the road and not... Uh -huh. But yeah. more personalized. Yeah, yeah. gotcha, okay. gotcha. Okay. Now what, if I want to take my hands off the, off, off the steering wheel for a minute, this will make sure what, I'm looking in the right direction, is that yeah. correct? So if your hand's free driving, then right. it makes sure that you're at least focused okay. towards the road. And I like that pointed thing on the end of my nose. That's, that's yeah. really attractive. Well, cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just kind of a Pinocchio thing, huh. yeah. No, I'm not lying, honest. Hey! <laughs> okay, Jay, let's look at some more of the technical systems over here. Give it a shot. So this here is our dyno room. Okay. And we do complete powertrain systems testing here. You check for, for noise, temperature, uh, speed, torque. Well, the fascinating kind of part for a car company, how quiet it is. Hmm? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's that's, almost that's, no noise because, yeah. you know, you think you'd be seeing sparks flying and machines pounding, you know, but it's yeah. not. That's, that's part of the clean technology, right? Can they fire that up? Can we, can we spin that motor? That's going. Oh, there you go. It's starting to go. So they I mean, check you barely hear anything. Yeah. yeah. They check for speed and, and range and efficiencies all through this, uh, this room here. All right, so here we're going to take a look at a few other things. So, Jay, I want to introduce you to Charlie. He's in charge of drive unit engineering. Nice oh, to meet how you. are you? Now, what is the correct term? Is it a, it's not an engine, it's a motor, right? It electric is. Electric is motor, it is. engine is internal combustion. That's, that's correct. Okay. Our electric motor is here, and our gearbox and uh, gear reduction system is on, is on that side there. So this is our lubrication development test rig. Okay. What we're doing in order to uh, increase the efficiency and range of our vehicle is concentrating pressurized jet lubrication directly to our electric motor. And we're evaluating splash lubrication in the gearbox side. Okay. And of course, if this was an internal combustion engine, the engine would be this big, and then the transmission would be out here at the end. That's correct. It showed you how efficient electric motors are, because it's all, and there are no gears in here. In I mean, you have gears, but not first, second, third. You just have one, because electric motors make such torque, you don't need a transmission to multiply it or reduce the that, power. That's so, correct. It's yeah. a single speed. Now, my question, and this doesn't be a dumb question, your motor and your transmission share the same oil. That's correct. correct? Okay. Now, but if, it, if this was a internal combustion engine, you'd have combustion byproducts within the oil, and the oil needs to be changed. With electric, you don't really ever have to do that, do you? That's right. Fill it and forget it. So Set you, for life. It's, uh, once you put oil in your engine, or your motor, see, and your transmission, you're filled for life. That's right? correct. Now, these gears constantly are chewing that lubricant. They are. So Doesn't it wear out like it would in an internal combustion engine? No, we have a uh, filter specifically designed for use with electric vehicle transmissions, and the oil that we're using has really good thermal characteristics mm -hmm. as well as uh, durability and wear characteristics, so that, so that we can just set it and forget it. So the oil literally never wears out. That's correct. But it's pretty much life of the vehicle fluid. That's correct. Okay. So again, that's another advantage to an electric car is you never have to change the oil or the lubricant. Lower maintenance cost, higher efficiency. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I imagine it's sealed. You can, 
you can once this engine is done, you you can't put more lubricant into it, can you? Correct. Okay. Well, well that's fascinating. All right. And of course, you never break teeth because you're not shifting gears. That, that's correct. So, our gearbox and and motor are designed for. Uh, specific life targets, and we're able to meet those durability targets and uh, performance requirements in a really power dense, efficient packaging space. Yeah, because an internal combustion engine, your power impulses are like this. Right. So that puts so you can break teeth in a gear. With this, you're constantly you're constantly engaged. You're never not engaged. So the teeth are never shifting. You know. A lot of times you hit TV, you break a tooth in transmission, or you know the synchro goes out. But with this, you're constantly smooth engagement, so nothing ever breaks. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. I mean, it really shows the superiority of electric motor versus an internal combustion. I, I agree. Yeah. Now, is this a running? Prototype? It is. So we can evaluate uh, lubricant flow and pressure distribution into the internally cast passageways of our uh, drive unit down there. So give me one second. So you can see how our electric oil pump takes oil from the sump through the filter, through our heat exchanger, right. and then directs that fluid flow onto the stator so we have a really efficiently, efficiently designed cooling package. Now, the faster the motor runs, the faster the pump goes, or is that at a steady speed? That's just a steady. The, the pump control is based on vehicle usage. Got so it. with an EV, we're chasing watts of power, and we want to be able to have the minimum necessary pump power right. so we can have the maximum amount of range. Can you run the whole engine here? Just by hand for this oh, development see, test rig. I see, okay. So you can see how some of the splash distribution right. happens inside the gearbox. So it throws it around. It yeah. does, yeah, yeah. And then we have, again, pressurized lube directed uh, right onto the You know, I have a lot of early engines, internal combustion, like T-head Mercers and things like that, and they have little cups that come around and they scoop the oil and they just throw it back. Oh, like throwing it over your shoulder, the way this kind of does. Same type of thing. Same thing. What do we got on the table over here? C come on, let me show you. So these are some, uh, some of our powertrain parts. So what we have here is the main bell housing and the electric motor. This is our output ring gear and open differential. The intermediate gear, so this second stage pinion would mesh with the output ring gear. And the sum of all these parts create that nine to one gear reduction ratio and the motor in that uh, efficient package that you saw. And before. you cast all your parts. For example, this here, this is where your, these are here to give you strength, correct? That's correct. Okay. So the ribbing benefits are for stiffness, strength, and noise. So they don't add in cooling at all, do they? No, they don't. We don't take a, we don't take into consideration some of the air cooling. Right, right. But they actually do cool. They, oh, they would okay. have passing cooling okay. effects, yeah. And these are, this is aluminum, obviously. It is, yeah, yes. Okay. okay. And that's all you're inside there. Okay. Now, do you polish this to give it even more smooth? Like if in, in a internal combustion engine, you'd polish this to make it more efficient, but not necessarily so with electric? No, I think with, uh, with what, we're, what we're doing here is uh, we've cast in some of these lubrication features, just like you mentioned before, and uh, we're able to run with an as-cast surface with machine surfaces for each one of the uh, critical features like the bearings and some of the, the park system components. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is a beautiful, I mean, if you know nothing about engines or cars or anything, you cannot help but appreciate just how beautifully made these are. I mean, it's almost like a piece of artwork or a piece of sculpture with the, with the helical these are, correct? Yes. Yeah. Straight cut is stronger, but noisy. That's and the correct. helical like this are actually quieter, so that you, well, you hear it. It doesn't make almost any noise at all. That's the oil pump up here. And this is the assembled? Yeah, this is our, our assembled drive unit. So small package, uh, such that we're able to package with respect to the, the leaf spring and the, that really low skateboard body. And that what does that motor weigh? Uh, this motor will weigh in the neighborhood of 200 pounds, okay. all assembled. But an internal combustion equivalent motor about that size would weigh 550, maybe 600 pounds. Efficient packaging. Okay, very efficient, very cool. Charlie, thank you very much. Thank you, nice really, to meet you. Really cool. So well, Jay, what else we got? Uh, you had a chance to ride in our first prototype, right? But now you get a drive our first beta test vehicle. So let's, uh, let's go try it out.
So Jay, this is a, a pre-production beta vehicle, so it's, it's still a development vehicle. Right. Uh, so it's obviously not completely finished. But this is what we're doing right now is we're validating it, we're checking it. We're testing uh, now as we get into uh, a mass production. Right. And so you can see the, the street view window is pretty sensational. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm looking through the windshield. I'm not uh -huh. looking down that much. Yeah, but it, that's it, more in your parking situation. Right, right, yeah. Lower, lower speeds. Uh, but it's it's light, it's airy, uh, feels good. Yeah, and what do they call it? The NVH noise, vibration, harshness. Yeah, all good. There's yeah. no noise. Yeah, there's no vibration. Exactly. Um, obviously, you're hearing like squeaking panels because uh -huh. things are not finished and right, all that right. is not in. But but, but for where our stage is, uh, yeah. uh, uh, it's pretty comfortable to to drive. Well, I mean, you know, for a crew, this is like giving birth to a baby. You make the thing, and then you now you're out. You go through the growing pains uh -huh. and you're driving around. Uh -huh. and, you know, yeah. we, we learn from, uh, yeah. from the development. Sight lines cycle. are good. Visibility is excellent. Uh -huh. Yeah. A lot of glass. Um, yeah, the greenhouse unique, is good. Uh, yeah. A pillar uh, placement. Because most cars, you're sitting right up there with that, with that I pillar, so you, that A pillar there, so you're blocking, it's blocking your view all the time. Right. Yeah, we did a lot of optimization to make sure. That the, especially in a city, which is a dynamic environment, you had a lot of visibility. Right. But really uh, unique. I mean, this is a it's quite the dream scenario to design a top hat that had no limitations. Yeah. So that's why you're sitting in a very uh, different different setup. And your crumple zones look especially strong. Mm-hmm. Yep. Safety uh, always a an important factor to validate. Um, Five star is now considered. You know, we have to we have to get there, so we will. Yeah, that's. I mean, you've got to be five star. Don't that's you? right. Yeah. Anything less is ah, I have a there. Yeah. And so there's absolutely no clutter. Only what you need, we put there. Right. So you have an airbag, we show it. Right. right? You don't drape over a bunch of ugly components. Some, you know, fashion statement. Everything here is designed. Uh, right. So was that your intention as a young man? Did you want to be a car designer? Did you ever think you'd be starting your own car company? I mean, that's 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 quite ambitious. Uh, no, I didn't think so. You know, actually, that, to to start a car company is kind of a crazy idea. It's a crazy concept. Um, it's extremely uh, challenging to do this. So, uh, I of course worked in all the, um, the sort of OEM traditional car companies, right. uh, and I felt like you know, this was kind of school, uh, continuation of school. Uh, to get to the point to do a car from from scratch, I mean that that only it doesn't come very often. No, I life. mean most yeah. people I know that are designers, they spend their whole life doing the door handle of the Taurus or designing the, you know, the power plug and the uh -huh. dash and how it's going to. You know, they have one little area they work yeah. on. Yeah. So for you guys to just kind of come in with a clean sheet of paper and design your own car and to make your own motor, which to me is the most impressive mm -hmm. feat. I mean. The, uh, to any vehicle, the power plant is the heart of the vehicle. And most yeah. people will use uh, one of the LS and Chevy or something, you know. So to actually sit down, and even though there are engines available or motors available, that you make your own, I think that's that's impressive. That, that's, that really shows the commitment. Yeah, the largest uh, group of our, our company is in the, the powertrain team. Right. And because that's, uh, it's not an easy task to do a, a motor from scratch. Um, but also, uh, when you work for another car company, uh, uh, a car company with a lot of legacy, there, there are so many requirements that are built in. And so there's always, uh, yeah. you can't do this, you can't do that. Plus, you can move in leaps instead of steps. You know, mm -hmm. most cars are evolutionary. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of like last year's model, but it has this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I remember when the Chrysler Airflow came out in 1934. It was a revolutionary car, aerodynamic. And people just went, oh, this is too far ahead of its time. Uh -huh. Where's the big radiator in the front with a big emblem that that's supposed to show status? Isn't yeah, it? And, when you and have legacy. Have that. Yeah, it had this waterfall yeah. grill, and, and it was a huge flop, even though aerodynamically and engineering-wise, it was a brilliant car. Yeah, the, the customer, they, they have certain expectations when you have legacy. Right. And, and there's an expectation that it... It, it looks and behaves in a certain way. Yeah, I mean, the best example of that is Porsche. Uh, when they first came out, the engine was in the rear. They made their reputation. Now, if Porsche does anything without 
a 911. Everyone freaks and, out. Oh, people <laughs> yeah, that go crazy. Yeah. 928 was a great car. Yeah. People ran away. 944, yeah. great car. People, ah, it's not a Porsche. They, you know, Harley Davidson, V twin. It has to, it has to look and sound like this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. when they came out with their electric, I guess they're still going to come out with it. I know it's been delayed for teething problems or something, but it's, it's. To get people to change, it's uh, it's very tricky. Uh, I think that's the benefit also of a new brand. Right. You, know, you can really um, take a position. You can take a new position that makes sense uh, for now and for the times. I think a legacy brand is just much more difficult. Yeah, and the fun thing about this people, this vehicle is, some people will love it and some will hate it. Sure. And yeah. you need both because. Uh -huh. Uh, without that hate, you don't uh -huh. get the love on the yeah. other side. You know, there are people that dare to be different, that want something new. Mm -hmm. You know, when when uh, Elon came out with that truck, some people just hated an awful, ugly, and I know other people went crazy. They had, what, 200,000 people put deposits down. Okay, all you need are 200,000 people uh -huh. to like it, and you're a success. I mean, the way we see it is if... Uh if you maybe don't understand the design, once you use it, once you see all the benefits, right, right. once you see that's a great deal, um, you'll you'll change your mind about it because it's it's uh, it's a meaningful functional design. Yeah. How about the name itself? See, when I was a kid, that was a cologne. The oh, new okay. canoe. <laughs> if you uh -huh. Google it, you'll see these uh -huh. old canoe commercials with the the sexy guy and the woman going, "Is that canoe? Do I spell mm -hmm. canoe?" Where does, it, where does it come from? We took reference from the, the actual canoe, the boat. Oh, okay. Um, something about a canoe is sustainable, it's clean, it's effortless. It's not about hauling ass, you know, you don't feel like, right. you know, you have to drive and, and win a zero to 60 war. Well, you know, in that same thing, when Stanley Steamer, the company, in 1906, they set the world's record for the fastest car, 127 miles an hour, Stanley Steamer. And what they did was they went to every canoe company in New England. And the Lake, I think it was Lakeville Canoe Company, had the best canoe. They pulled it through the water using um, a meter, you know, how many pounds of pressure needs uh -huh. to pull. And their canoe was the swiftest through, required the least amount of pressure to go uh -huh. through the water. So they bought two canoes. They took one on top of the other, and they put the engine inside, uh -huh. and they went 127 oh, miles okay. an hour. I mean, it was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. It's using thought of... Uh, Water as the as as the wind. There wasn't a uh -huh. wind tunnel, obviously, so they used sort of water as the okay. aerodynamics. Yeah, so we like the name. Um, I find it also a little bit quirky. It's not uh, trying to be super cool. It's just it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we we very quickly uh, when we uh, actually naming a company is probably harder than designing a car because um, <laughs> everyone's right and wrong at the same time. So I can't challenge uh, our powertrain team on. Uh, the uh, the efficiency of their their motor, but we can talk and debate about a name of a company right, uh, right. for years. So yeah, this drive-by-wire steering is is very nice. Yeah, and, and, and I imagine we're gonna tune it; it'll get right, even better. Yeah. As you can adjust it for amount of road feel, mm -hmm. it feels very French. The French, like the Citroen SM, has a hydraulic. The faster you go, the less power steering you have. So at low speed, you go like this, and you get this, uh -huh. and then when you get up to 60 or 70, it, it, it turns and drives okay. it, yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure it must have been a great day the first time you took this thing around the block. Mm -hmm. There must mm -hmm. have been some champagne corks popping and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, right? I mean, we do a lot of uh, um, development, and as things pop into the 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 cycle it, it, there's always something to celebrate so we go very fast well that's what I mean but it, but it's yeah. a great feeling to make something and to produce something yeah you know a lot of people can sit everybody wants to be a you know a web designer or something but I don't know to me that's not you're making a product of which somebody else will make tires uh -huh. which somebody else will make uh, fluids uh, somebody else will make brakes somebody else you know and you you make a you uh, you build a company yeah. that provides work for other people which makes for a, a better economy yeah no that's very true there's a lot of suppliers partners yeah um, there's there's hundreds of parts on this vehicle that need to come together uh, it's not a digital product this is a physical product so um, yeah it's nice it's nice to build to touch oh yeah something. yeah and you watch and a few years will be going remember that first one we built oh man look at that thing you know and you'll look at it you, you know you'll be so far ahead of the game no I think it's great I, I, I cool. think it's I think it's wonderful People think because you like old cars, they, oh, you must hate new technology. I don't. 
I find it fascinating. Yeah, I think uh, both can live together. Um, oh, exactly, exactly. Well, it's very nice to drive. Cool. It handles yeah. well. Again, it's less effort to drive than a gas car. I mean, I'm not shifting gears. Yeah. I'm not, you know. Uh -huh. It's quiet. I mean, I'm talking to you. I'm quite not raising my voice. When I accelerate, it doesn't get louder. It, 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 uh, no, it's great. I think you've done a, just a terrific job. Yeah, thanks. Well, I want to thank Richard and the whole, whole crew. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know? thanks. Thanks for I coming. I'm, yeah. I'm very optimistic about the future. I, I think it's great. I'm not one of these yeah. doom and gloom guys. <laughs> you know, yeah. because when I came to L.A. 40 years ago, there were 160 days a year. You couldn't go outside. Mm -hmm. The smog. I mean, there's still smog, but it's we have 10 times as many cars. and it's 10 times cleaner yeah you know right. I, yeah. i'm one of these people who believe engineers like yourself will save the world whether it's feeding people on less acreage whether it's converting to electricity to save fossil fuel i, I think it's all great and it, it, it's it's really fun to see new companies start up that not in china not in japan not mm -hmm. in canada but right here in los mm -hmm. angeles you know yeah. so once again, thank you, my yeah, friend. Congratulations, thanks, and, yeah, and uh, it. give my crew the best. And I'm yeah. going to take this home for the weekend and see how it does. Cool. Thanks. <laughs>